Throughout history, it has been the inaction of those who could have acted, the indifference of those who should have known better, the silence of the voice of justice when it matters most. That has made it possible for evil to triumph. A quote there from His Imperial Highness, Haile Selassie I. Hi there, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Welcome to Jamaica Magazine. Coming up on the pages, we look at a partnership we can all share in to prevent crime and violence within our communities. Plus, an inspiring story of one farmer who is able to reap in abundance from a few grain of peas. And still to come, top government stories making news this week. So sit back and relax with those and more right after these messages. The Ministry of Education, Youth and Information is committed to ensuring that every Jamaican child has the best learning environment to thrive and needs your cooperation to make the education system work successfully. What are the school's voluntary contributions for? Co-curricular and sports activities and school development. What amount are parents to contribute? Your contributions are voluntary and the amount depends on the type of programs being offered by the school. If my child is being denied access to school, can I complain to the ministry? Yes. You can call or visit any of the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information's six regional offices or send an email to complaints at moey.gov.jm. What support is there for PATH students? PATH students are not expected to make contributions and are to be provided with five days free lunch as of this year. Parents and guardians, do continue to make your voluntary financial contributions to your children's school. The institutions need your assistance for their school development and sporting activities. Remember... Every child can learn. Every child must learn. All the people them with the want Zig V, hold up your hand. Zig V in the Caribbean territory, but we now want that virus take set pan we. So make sure it's send us stagnant water in sight and mash up all mosquito breed in sight. Pour hole in the tin them where you dash way and change the water in your vase every day. No litter, dispose of your garbage proper. You know them the tin the we turn drain blacker. Tour your community and tour your yard for suppress mosquito. We half a go hard dash we all tire turn over drum pan for prevention is the greatest weapon and special shout. Out to pregnant ladies, protect yourselves and protect your babies. Draw for your zapper and your mosquito spray. If you do all that, we can keep them away. How in a wazing thing? Good values and attitudes is an important plank in maintaining safety and security. So the government continues its push for national transformation involving the home, school, and social environment. We'll learn more in this next feature. We all know that the youth are and will remain a significant share of Jamaica's population for the foreseeable future. Developing and implementing appropriate strategies, policies and programs to mitigate the risk and challenges they face must and is a priority of this administration. Any failure to provide appropriate opportunities for this large segment of the population could have enormous economic, political, cultural, and social consequences. Engaging the youth population fully is therefore no longer a choice, but an imperative in the development process in taking Jamaica from poverty to prosperity, and with extension to fully develop Jamaica, our island home. In order to ensure not only the important safety of our youth, but have put in place, we have put in place a five pillar strategy to ensure the safety and security of our nation in the years to come. Safety and security is a function of the values and attitudes in the society. Our actions are driven by values and therefore if we were to re-engineer re -engineer in Jamaica a culture of respect, uh, sanctity of life, a uh, culture of how we resolve our conflicts peaceably, then what a Jamaica we would have. And uh, a culture of working, a culture of doing things in a very ethical way, no scamming, not, not following the law. That is the kind of society that we want and it all 
come down to the values that we hold dearly. The educators, therefore, in the audience will appreciate the counteractive influence that the society and in the home, the community, and via the media in all its forms has on the teaching and learning process. At the school level, the Ministry of Education, Youth, and Information has introduced a suite of behavioral management programs aimed at promoting positive socialization, behavior change, and ultimately education. Programs all fall under the framework of the school-wide positive behavior intervention support system. Through this framework, teachers are adopting positive approaches to improve student behavior and attitude to learning. In addition to the behavior management programs, the ministry also has been promoting the formation of uniform groups in schools. We are at the point in our life as a country where far too many of the maladies of our society are mirrored in our schools. I am afraid that the guidance counselors, the deans of discipline, the school resource officers, and other officials who volunteer to help in the schools, I'm afraid they will not be sufficient to curb indiscipline and delinquency that is so evident in many of our schools today. It will require innovative initiatives and partnerships like this conference to disrupt the trajectory that is taking us as a country to the brink. Indeed, if we truly want to transform our country, the school and the home are where we must start. This conference, this partnership, represent a good start. Let us all work together to build this great nation, Jamaica, land we love. back to school again. Students, educators, and all stakeholders are ready for the start of the 2016-2017 academic year. Remember that no student must be denied access to any school. Tune into a national broadcast from the Education, Youth, and Information Minister, Senator Ruel Reed, on school's readiness for the new year. That's a national broadcast by Education, Youth, and Information Minister Senator Ruel Reed this Sunday, September 4, on this station. One farmer with access to land and a few grains of peas he considered his blessing now shares with us his story of multiplying that blessing to reap abundantly. It's the Benjamin story next. All this from just three peas. While we're coming, I saw two grain of peas on the road and I picked it up. I take it home with me and I planted it beside my Kalalu garden at the home. This was in 1982 and the third pea was found just a few days later at the same spot. I saw a sucker. I just take my machete, take it up like that and I hold it like that and go to the field. And I planted it there and that's how I started. From then, I keep planting and keep planting, and I buy a cow out of it. I raise chickens out of it, and 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 I feel delighted to keep on doing it, doing it. As the message is that we might not have the wing way of life to fly up, but with small grains and have the courage to do it, we can reach somewhere. Words of wisdom from Zephaniah Gibson, affectionately called Reuben, which somehow evolved into Benjamin. This West Rural St. Andrew farmer is proof positive that big things can come from small starts. It's a message he's eager to share using his success as an example from three peas planted in 1982 to close to one acre being sown and reaped today. It's a journey that has been documented in a manuscript titled Benjamin's Adventure. And it born out of a desire to
to help those who are lazy. You don't want to do anything. And you say, this little muscle or this little, it's the two grain is too small to start with. But Benjamin start with it. And it never hard, it wasn't hard to do it for me because I love farming. And here is it today. Grain in abundance. Mr. Gibson, or Benjamin, is a farmer at heart, working the soil every chance he gets. I would not live nowhere if I don't have even a square like this to plant something. I, wouldn't, I don't want it to live. No. Planting is my nature and I, I enjoy. And every day, you know what is big thing? 365 days make a year. And last year I've never bought one grain of peas heating my rice and peas. And this passion has him planting just about anything. If you want me to cut it, make it very pretty. And it's 10 pumpkins come on the one tree. So I picked up three already. This is the fourth one, and I have six more. This is a blue, blue and white silvins. This yam heat very delicious. Mr. Gibson embodies the Ministry of Agriculture's Grow What We Eat, Eat What We Grow campaign. From his humble farm, he has been able to feed his family and provide for them from the sale of his produce. I use the farm as a source of backup along with my trade. I'm a skilled stone mason. I do painting otherwise and masonry. Looking back, if I had to do it over again, I would still do it because I thank God he gave me strength to do it and the courage to do it. I'm a happy farmer. I'm a happy Benjamin. At home in Salisbury Plain District, St. Andrew, his wife gives him the support he needs. We prayed and asked God to bless whatever he put in the hurt. And you know, I know that the Lord did what we have asked him for. You know, little is much when God is in it. I didn't plan to marry a farmer, but I'm not, I have no regrets. He's very um, hardworking and willing to do. When he reap the crop, I sit down and I um, shell out the peas them, and then we put it to sun and sometimes we sell it to neighbors and sometimes far out. And he save his money and you know, that helps support us very well. And I thank God for that. We live as a loving people, helpful to each other, anything we share among ourselves. You know. Things are good now, but Zephaniah Gibson has had moments of hardship, like losing a whole field of young plants to heavy rainfall. But he got up and got to planting again. Although I am not down um, on my face, I am not going to lie there. I am going to stand tall and fight on. I said, Courage, brother, do not falter. I still decided not to stop because food is a must. Food must come from somewhere and it must be planted. You can join the ranks too. Stop digging out your hand, Miguel. Join the ranks. Stop wasting time. Farm the land to feed your family. On the board this week, 
Invitations are now open for entries to all Jamaica Cultural Development Commission JCDC competitions for 2017. These competitions include the Jamaica Culinary Arts Competition, Jamaica Visual Arts Competition and Exhibition, Jamaica Creative Writing Competition and Exhibition, Jamaica Adult and Children's Gospel Song Competitions, Jamaica Festival Song Competition, Miss Jamaica Festival Queen Competition, World Reggae Dance Championship and National Festival of the Performing Arts, which covers the areas of dance and deaf dance, drama, music, speech and traditional folk forms. Entry forms as well as additional information for the various competitions can be accessed online at the JCDC's website www.jcdc.gov.jm and at the JCDC head office, 3 to 5 Phoenix Avenue, Kingston 10 and all JCDC parish offices island-wide. The Ministry of Justice in its thrust to sensitize JPs and community leaders about human trafficking, restorative justice and other matters will be hosting training sessions on Monday and Tuesday, September 5 and 6 at the Ministry of Justice Large Conference Room, 6 to 1 Constant Spring Road, Kingston 10, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. each day. JPs and community leaders are invited to attend. The Ministry of Justice is also inviting all interested partners to a sensitization session on justice services to be held on Thursday, September 8 at the Montego Bay Convention Center. The sensitization session will run from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And that's all for our community notices today. Send us your events for broadcast on the JIS Community Notice Board. Call 922-868022 or send an email to cbishop at jis.gov.jm. No son, a verb is an action word. Parents need to become more involved in their children's education. Parents are the first, and in many cases, the most important teachers. Read with your children. Review their schoolwork. Visit their school. Tapping and mm -hmm. rapping and slapping, I said. Nice, high five. Woo. <laughs> A good education will never decay. Sport has long been recognized as a unifying force around the world, and many violence-prone communities in Jamaica are also seeing the benefits. Youth up to 29 years of age in six inner-city communities are learning the skills to avoid a life of crime and violence through sports. Take a look. alliance of partners, Government Citizen Security and Justice Program CSJP is empowering at-risk young people aged 7 to 29 to resist crime and violence. And the intervention is modeled on a Brazilian program called Fight for Peace. Fight for Peace is an NGO that uses boxing and martial arts as well as a holistic set of services for young people to help get young people that are living in violent communities out of crime and violence and into more positive life outcomes. In this local version dubbed Kick Out Crime and Violence, youth in six inner city communities are engaged in personal development based on five pillars. Boxing, martial arts, education, employability, youth support services and youth leadership. Support to carry out the program has been boosted by a recent $20.7 million grant from the United Kingdom Department for International Development, DFID. It's allowing CSJP and its partners to implement the project in the communities of Hannatown, Denhamtown, Trenchtown, Fletcher's Land, Parade Gardens and Tivoli Gardens in Kingston. Throughout the week, youngsters in these communities are exposed to boxing, wrestling and taekwondo classes, which are not just fun, but are also instilling discipline, self-esteem, confidence and the strength to resist negativity, regardless of the circumstances. 
but it also teaches them to control their physical aggression and to use that aggression um, smartly because the thing about these sports is that it's not necessarily the strongest person who wins, it's the person who, is, who has the most control over his or her um, physical strength and so that has been proven to be a really effective bridge in teaching them about self-control in general. If you learn to control yourself in the sport, it's easier for you to learn how to control yourself in life. Tell me guys, how would you define communication? What is the interaction between two or more persons? Interacting in a way, we can be... We don't even have to use words. We don't have to use sign language to have a meaning to words. Body language, gesture, gesticulation, and all those things, right? Or the act and the process of using words, sound, sign, or behavior to express our exchange of information. This social intervention program, which started in May 2016, is being jointly delivered in Jamaica using a network of social development partners already involved with youth development, including the Social Development Commission. Other partners are the Peace Management Initiative, Jamaica Defense Force, Jamaica Boxing Board of Control, Capoeira Alafia, Rise Life Management, Youth, Fletcher's Land Benevolent Society, Joytown, Boys Town, and Bread's Treasure Beach Foundation. Well, working with the partners that are a part of the Fight for Peace Network, we asked them to refer young people to us who they were already relating to in some way. So either it was a young person that was in one of their programs, but they don't think that the program was working as effectively for that young person, or somebody who had just dropped out of their program, or somebody that was kind of on their radar to come into another program. The various groups meet at the JDF Up Park Camp on Saturdays for the training session. This is an opportunity, not just for us at the ministry, to really hold hands with you, fight for peace and defeat, um, as we engage our youth and empower our youth to become the ambassadors and the messengers in their communities. I think Fight for Peace International and its partners in mixing sport, skill development and mentoring have had great success in the UK, Brazil, and also emerging in Jamaica to improve the lives of at-risk youth. We firmly believe that an effective government-led public health intervention targeting at-risk youth and the communities suffering most from the scourge of violence can really help improve community security in Jamaica. We have championed e-learning in Jamaica, provided state-of-the-art technology in over 200 educational institutions, developed materials for CSEC, piloted the Tablets in Schools project in 38 schools, including infant and primary, and trained thousands of teachers in technology integration. We are e-learning Jamaica Company Limited, EL Jam, an agency of the Ministry of Science, Energy, and Technology. Visit our website, www.elearnja.org. Up next, top stories making news this week. Hi there, I'm Simone Wolf with your JIS News of the Week. The Bank of Jamaica reported this week that the country's real GDP was estimated to have grown at an accelerated pace for the April to June 2016 quarter, with economic strengthening projected for the second consecutive year. Inflation, meanwhile, is expected to remain flat for the September and December quarters, before increasing during the March quarter to end the fiscal year within the target range of 4.5 to 6.5%. As he broke ground for an additional 63,000 square feet of BPO space at the Montego Bay Free Zone this week, Prime Minister Andrew Holness announced that more Jamaicans would get jobs as early as later this year into early 2017 from seven BPO projects that are in the works. We are not only interested in answering the telephone. We are also interested in doing the accounting work in doing the medical records processing work. We are interested in doing the computer repair work. We are interested in doing chat service, that if something has gone wrong, you use your email, your WhatsApp, and somebody responds to you right away. We are interested in those higher level services in the business process outsourcing sector. 
Education Minister Senator Royal Reed announced this week that all was in place for Monday's start of the new school year. Secondary schools are to get their second tranche of tuition funding in the second week of September, while primary schools have received their first-term grants and their maintenance grants. Schools have also received funding for their nutrition programs, while 35,000 pieces of furniture are being delivered and critical infrastructure repairs are being completed. In addition, the delivery of books to schools is on the way as I speak and will be completed by September 30th, 2016. Schools are, however, reminded that titles which appear on the 2016-2017 approved textbook list must not, and I repeat, must not be included on schools' book list. The National Solid Waste Management Authority, the NSWMA, is warning persons to desist from using an illegal dump site situated in the Bedwood Gardens community or face the full force of the law. NSWMA's Chief Technical Officer Audley Gordon toured the area on Wednesday and told JIS News that the authority's enforcement department would be making the matter their number one priority. And they will be collaborating with the Jamaica Constabulary Force and if necessary, the Jamaica Defence Force, to put an end to this. We are going to be looking out to find the first one that we can charge and make, and make an example that people know that we are serious and deadly serious to put an end to this illegal activity. Government is delivering on its commitment to increase the mobility of the police force by repairing 100 damaged police vehicles under Operation Quick Fix. At an official handing over ceremony this week, National Security Minister Robert Montague announced that 20 of the vehicles have been repaired and released to various police divisions across the country. It is cheaper in my view to get the vehicles out rather than have them parked here. The TNR has also they have, in effect, a maintenance program where vehicles are now required to come in, whether here or in the contracted garages in western and northern Jamaica, on a cycle for maintenance. Small resort operators in Treasure Beach, St. Elizabeth, now have access to a $20 million loan facility to upgrade their offerings. I'm fully cognizant of the role that Treasure Beach has played in the building out of tourism in Jamaica over the years. And indeed in terms of the contribution in dollar terms that you have made to the foreign exchange generation in this country. Beneficiaries can access up to $2 million each. It's being financed by the Tourism Enhancement Fund and administered by Jamaica National Small Business Loans. And finally, as of September 1, the National Health Fund, the NHF, has doubled the pharmaceutical subsidy it provides for children 0 to 18 years old. This will apply to children who are registered on the NHF card program. Kids with asthma, epilepsy, psychosis, uh, diabetes, and a number of other ailments. And some families that we have found on our program have more than one child with a chronic illness. So it is a huge burden for families and we felt that it was important that we increase the benefit to children. And those are some of the stories making news this week. I'm Simone Wolf. This is where we take our leave on yet another enlightening edition of Jamaica Magazine. We value your feedback, so keep the link through our various social media platforms. Send an email to jamaicamagazine at jis.gov.jm and visit our website, jis.gov.jm, for the latest on government information. Until next time, I'm Adrian Atkinson, reminding you to take care of your health, eat well, exercise, get adequate rest, and make every day a productive one. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.